Dexerto has done a really fascinating interview with Lorne Lanning where he talks a bit about the future of the Oddworld franchise now that Oddworld Soulstorm has been released. Firstly, it should be prefaced that Soulstorm only came out last month and as Lorne says, there is currently no guarantee that there will be another Oddworld game as it needs financing, so it all depends on if they can get that, which I assume is basically meaning if Soulstorm sells well, hopefully we'll get the next game, but naturally he doesn't want to say so soon, definitely that there will be another one if it isn't confirmed and they aren't 100% sure they will actually be able to make it. But now that's out of the way, let's get on with the exciting bit, where Lorne says he has lots of ideas about where he wants to take the New Old World Quintology, including, Lorne says, Stranger should play a role in the Quintology for sure. I was astonished when I read this. That really surprised me because Stranger wasn't even a part of the Old Old World Quintology. It's always just sort of been like, oh yeah, Stranger was a one-off, there's not going to be a sequel, it's separate from the Quintology, his story is done, and all that kind of thing. So I think it's really exciting that Lorne seemed pretty definite that Stranger will be in a new Oddworld Quintology, and I think for Oddworld as a whole, this brings a whole new dimension. Gosh, I just realised that that probably means Stranger's actually gonna meet Abe. That is so wild. This is something people have dreamt about. A couple of times, people have said to me, who do you think would win in a fight between Stranger and Abe? And stuff like this, to a point I even planned on doing a video imagining it. But it looks like some kind of interaction may actually canonically happen between the two in Oddworld's future, which is bloody exciting. I just wonder how they might incorporate Stranger into the new Oddworld Quintology. He's a bounty hunter and Abe is a wanted terrorist, so many people have suggested in the past, what if Stranger comes to try and hunt down Abe? Will Stranger be a bad guy, perhaps? Or a bad guy that turns good? Or will he be on Abe's side right from the start? I guess this means that they might incorporate elements and retell Stranger's story in the new Oddworld canon, and that presents so many opportunities. One of the things that I personally didn't like about Stranger's Wrath with the native characters in it, I don't even remember what they were called, I just found them annoying, but in the storyline of Stranger's Wrath, they're the ones that, you know, bring about Stranger's, uh, what do you want to call it, the thing of Stranger accepting himself as he is and fighting against evil instead of trying to get money for an operation to hide the fact that he's a thief. I just wonder if what if Abe and the Mudokans are the ones that do that for him in the new Oddworld Quintology, aka get rid of the loudmouth sardine looking fellas and retell Stranger's story with the Eastern Mudos characters and species. I'd quite like that personally. My prediction as a result is that Stranger would appear potentially as an enemy of Abe for like the majority of the first game he's in, and then by the end he'd be redeemed and change his sides and fights against the industrialists that persecute him instead of trying to blend into their world, which would set him up as being an ally of Abe in the next game after that. Law Nanin continues by saying even more great news, Munch as well will play a role in the new Oddworld Quintology, but he won't be as dominant as he was before. Which is understandable considering it's known that Abe is the main hero of the entire Quintology now, and as Munch literally got his own game in the last one, it was obvious that if he was included in a new one, he would naturally have a less big role as a result. But the fact that Munch is intended to be given a role is immensely exciting. A lot of people wanted to see more of Munch, I really want to see more of Munch, so it's really great that there's plans for him to be involved. You know, the trouble is with these characters, Stranger and Munch, is that they've only appeared in one game each, so there's not much variation, and I've always been fascinated, primarily with Munch, mainly because Stranger got a really good game, that was how it was meant to be, and as a result, Stranger is kind of satisfying in that way. I've never heard anyone say, oh, it's a shame Insert Thing Here was cut out of Stranger's Wrath, because that didn't really happen. Stranger's Wrath was a really good, solid game, probably one of the only Oddworld games that came out as it was meant to be, where there isn't really a what-if element. Whereas with Munch, it's the complete opposite. There's so many what-ifs with it because so much was cut out of it. So much of the final game wasn't what was expected or intended, and because of that, I've always primarily been fascinated to see Munch return, because the idea of him redoing his character would be really interesting to see. As for what this means for the new Oddworld Quintology, I think it's really brilliant that potentially all three of the original main Oddworld heroes will meet each other, or at least play a role, which was something that was never even conceived for the original Quintology, let alone alone the new one, so it's really surprising and amazing. It feels like one of those Doctor Who specials where all the old Doctors meet up in the same episode. Even though Abe is the main hero of the new Oddworld Quintology, the idea for the old one was that each game would introduce a new hero, and at the end, in the final game, you'd end up with a group of all the heroes. Potentially the new one, while maintaining the point of Abe being the primary hero, it might be sort of quietly in the background compiling a similar group of heroes, maybe. Potentially made up of Abe 
Alf, Toby, Munch and Stranger for this new version of the franchise and just easing off on the prominence of each hero by not dedicating a game for each one and I suspect that's what Lorne is suggesting by saying Munch won't be as dominant as he was before. The article also says that Lorne isn't opposed to including cut features from Oddworld Soulstorm in future Oddworld games because again, there was a lot cut from Soulstorm that they wanted to do but that didn't make it into the final game and I felt that while playing it I think. When playing it I sort of felt like it gave me a very Abe's Odyssey vibe and what I mean by that, because that sounds rather ironic considering it was a reimagining of Abe's Exodus but what I mean is Personally, to me, it felt like the way they spent a few years making Abe's Odyssey, creating the engine or whatever they had to do for that game, and they made a really great game, but then within a really short time, in just 8 months, they used what they'd created in Odyssey and made Oddworld Abe's Exodus, a game that is way bigger and, in the opinions of many people, way better than Odyssey, even though Odyssey was itself a good game. Abe's Odyssey took the time to build and ended up setting the stage for Exodus, and the result is really astonishing. That's the feeling I got from Oddworld Soulstorm, that it was a game that was setting up the future of Oddworld, and this is further backed up by what Lorne said in 2019 on Discord. Something like Soulstorm is about building up the engine, the resources and all that they need to make games, and once that's done, which were Soulstorm's out now, it would only take about two years after that to make each new game, which would naturally, I suspect, have a tightening of controls gameplay improvements, that sort of thing, and this would allow them to finally finish the Oddworld Quintology and get it done, and make even better games than Oddworld Soulstorm, without having to completely make up a whole new engine from scratch and all that sort of thing. I also hope that the fact, firstly, that they'd like to use elements cut from Soulstorm, but also the fact that Munch should play a role in the new Quintology is a sign that they'll be taking elements from Munch's Odyssey that were cut and finally getting to use them, hopefully. I think that'd be really good and really interesting to see. Now the next thing the Dixerto article, is that how it's pronounced? Dixerto? Dis Dixert or whatever. The next thing the article discusses is the idea of an Oddworld TV series. It says executive producer of Oddworld Soulstorm, Benny Terry III, said that they purposely made the cutscenes of Oddworld Soulstorm immensely beautiful and of a film-like standard, way more so than would be acceptable or expected of a game. The reason being that they put so much of the budget towards the cinematics was because they wanted people to watch the cutscenes and automatically start thinking, you know, maybe this should be a film or a TV series. Series. The idea being, if people start thinking like that, it promotes conversations regarding that and the idea of it. While not wanting to say too much in case nothing comes of it, Lorne Lannan did also say, we've been talking about doing an animated series, and I'd like to keep that first season right in Rupture Farms, just looking at these lives and see what we could do if we were just focusing on retelling the story. Which is really interesting that, although at the moment, who knows how likely it is that they'd even be able to create an animated series, it's just literary ideas at the moment, but the fact that they have ideas and are willing to even mention the concept of an animated show is quite a good sign and really interesting if you ask me. Is it also provide an opportunity to retell the story of Abe's Odyssey to some degree, I guess, if they primarily set it in Rupture Farms but with the new style of Oddworld Soulstorm and in far greater detail? You get about... I don't know, less than a minute of Abe's life as a Rupture Farms employee in the games, when in reality that comprised probably most of his life. So the idea of getting to see that in greater detail across an entire animated series I think would be really fascinating, and I bet there's a ton they could do with that. I'm just imagining the new Abe and Moloch, as seen in Soulstorm, but in their own animated series. Especially the Moloch character would work really well in a TV show, I think. And you could have the pilot Slig as his personal valet or something, you know, I think it'd be quite good. And plus, to get a backstory on Alf and especially Toby would be great because they just sort of turn up in Soulstorm, not being seen before in the new Oddworld canon, aside from Alf in Alf's Escape. So it'd be really good to see them working together before they were free and how they all know each other and all that kind of thing. In terms of story for the future of the Oddworld franchise, Lon says, I really hope to be able to go deeper into the story of Ape, because I think the story so far has been kind of superficial, and later says, the story I want to tell, of course, is Abe changing the world, but it's a little dangerous to talk too much about where you're going, because the audience is always disappointed if we're waiting on what you say. Which is really understandable, they don't want to say too much about what they might be doing, when they might not even be able to get the money to do it. Either way, I think it's a really good sign that they're even having these conversations and thinking about these ideas, you know, especially the branching out into different forms of media, which would really massively cement the odd world universe, I think. I'd also really like it if they started looking into doing stuff like digital comics and stuff like that as well. I think that'd be really good. 
and maybe singular smaller games to some degree, telling smaller stories about other elements and parts of Oddworld, like Stranger's Wrath but on a massively smaller scale. As for whether or not any of this stuff that is just ideas at the moment will actually come to fruition, it all depends on if Oddworld Soulstorm sells well and Oddworld inhabitants get the financing they need. While we won't know for sure if they accomplish this until they announce something, it's a good sign at least that it was the top seller on the Epic Games Store when it was released. Hopefully that's a positive indicator that it sold well in general. As for when an announcement might be, well all I can say is that New and Tasty was first released in July 2014, and the first acknowledgement of the project that became Soulstorm was in April 2015, but it wasn't officially announced as Oddworld Soulstorm until March 2016, so who knows. Either way, the fact that they're even talking about the future of the franchise is a fantastic sign to me. I'd certainly really love to see what they want to make next, and it's really amazing to hear him talk about the future of Oddworld after Soulstorm. Hello, follow me. Mm -hmm. 